Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. Oh my goodness, do I have some whoppers for you this week. Ho, 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 ho. First off, we're starting off with the brand new lawsuit against ColourPop. Why are they in trouble? What is happening? Does the plaintiff have a case? We're gonna go all through it. Next up, we'll talk about Brad Pitt's new skincare line. Yes, you heard me right. The guy from Benjamin Button came out with an anti-aging skincare line. Well, I have, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on this one because there are so many elements of this that are fascinating to me. And then as we ease into the product report, there are so many things that drop getting ready for holiday of 2022. If you're interested in gift sets, if you're interested in getting a deal, getting bundle deals, I've got all of that coming up for you. Hang tight. We are jumping into it right now. For this ColourPop lawsuit, it is not deja vu. You have not seen this story before. This just dropped last week. ColourPop is being sued, and can you guess why? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. They have something in common with Morphe and Huda Beauty. They're being sued for their inherently dangerous, not eye safe pigments that are used in their eyeshadows and in their case, eyeliner products. Before we go any further, before you throw away all of your ColourPop products, these pigments have been approved for use around the eye area in the European Union. We've talked about this so many times on the channel, going all the way back to the original Manny MUA Lunar Beauty launch, the Morphe James Charles palette. But essentially, according to a lot of the professionals, the FDA is kind of behind on these regulations in calling these pigments not safe for eye use. That doesn't mean that some people can't be sensitive to them. That doesn't mean that it can't cause an allergic reaction in some people. There are plenty of skincare and makeup ingredients that cause a reaction in one way or another. That doesn't necessarily mean that it shouldn't be FDA approved for eye use. Now with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of this particular lawsuit because it is different than the Morphe and the Huda Beauty lawsuits. The thing that is the same is that the lawsuit says that they're Disclaimer language falls short of adequately informing customers of the risks of using its eye makeup around the eyes in that it does not assist the customer in understanding the danger. And what they're assuming here is that because it is not FDA approved for eye use, it is therefore dangerous to the consumer and that ColourPop is using them knowing this danger. ColourPop is very good, at least that I've seen, on their eyeshadow palettes, putting not intended for use around the eye area. Now, this is a statement that's been put out for many, many years. The first eyeshadow palette I remember seeing like this was the Urban Decay Electric Palette, and everybody lost their minds until the scientists chimed in and calmed us all down. But what this lawsuit is saying is that that particular disclaimer doesn't specifically instruct consumers not to use it on the eyes. They just say not intended for use around the eye area. It doesn't say don't use it on your eyes. And that's one of their big gripes. They also go into the fact that ColourPop uses different terms like pressed pigment palettes, shadow palettes, or pressed powder palettes, instead of calling them eyeshadow palettes, which they find misleading. And also that they're eyeliner products use some of these pigments, which I didn't realize. This is the specific language used in the lawsuit. Plaintiff and each putative class member have been damaged and suffered an injury, in fact, caused by defendants' false, fraudulent, unfair, deceptive, and misleading practices as set forth herein and seek compensatory damages and injunctive relief. Now, the plaintiff in this case is Casey Wilson. She purchased ColourPop's Boudoir Noir and Menage a Moi eyeshadow palettes. It does not say in the lawsuit that I could find anywhere that she was physically damaged in any way by these products. Now that is different from the Morphe lawsuit. The Morphe lawsuit claims that people got eye irritation from these pigments. The Huda Beauty did not. Morphe's is saying physical injury, where even though they say injury, 
I don't think this lawsuit is specifically meaning physical injury because Casey does not say that she was physically injured by this product. What this all relies on is that Casey says she would not have purchased the palettes if she had known they had these pigments in them. She also says that because they were used as eyeshadows in ColourPop's marketing, she bought them as eyeshadows and because she doesn't feel like she can use them as eyeshadows, they're essentially worthless. And this is one thing that I've been screaming about <laughs> since the beginning of all this, since brands really started using these pigments, is that not only shouldn't you call them eyeshadow products, you also really shouldn't be using them on the eye in demonstrations, in marketing for the products, if they're not intended for use around the eye area. It's just a loophole that brands have been running through over the past five, six years. And that's one of the things that they're complaining about is even though they're calling it a pressed pigment palette, even though they are putting that disclaimer not intended for use around the eyes, the photos advertising the product do show it being used on the eyes. And what I was surprised about with this is they're saying the eyeliners also use some of these pigments. In the lawsuit, they say that ColourPop was putting for the eyeliner advertisement on the actual website in the how to use that they were would provide a comfortable application in the waterline. And if these eyeliners did have those not FDA approved pigments in them and they were advertising them for use on the waterline, this lawsuit really, in my opinion, has a point. Where I feel like they are stretching it though, is that they said that on the website, it had said, while not intended for use in the immediate eye area, these shades can be used anywhere else on your face or body. We recommend using these shades to enhance your overall look. For example, using the pigments on your temples or underneath your brow. And they're saying that that's too close to the immediate eye area, that the temples over here and here are the immediate eye area, which I don't know the legal definition of that, but as a makeup user, I do not call this the immediate eye area. I do not call this the immediate eye area. That's just, for me as a makeup user, that's not real. The next question in all of these lawsuits is what are they seeking? What do the plaintiffs want? And they want, like all the other lawsuits, they want refunds, but also they want punitive damages because they say they sent a certified letter to ColourPop and was like, hey, you shouldn't be using these pigments. And ColourPop continued to produce new eyeshadow palettes or pigment palettes or whatever they called them with the disclaimer even after they were told. So they feel like ColourPop will continue to produce these palettes that they say are inherently dangerous unless they are financially punished for doing Doing so. That continuing to produce products like this constituted a conscious disregard or indifference to the life, safety, or rights of persons exposed to such conduct. Defendants' malicious and fraudulent conduct must be punished to deter future harm to others. All right, so this is bull. Okay, <laughs> like this is the thing. This is why laws need to be updated. This is why the FDA really needs to step in here because to me, that's bullshit. That's not, there is no danger to consumers, in my opinion, unless you are sensitive to the ingredient. But people are sensitive to plenty of FDA approved ingredients like bismuth oxychloride. Some people are sensitive to parabens. Some people are sensitive to sulfate. Some people are sensitive to products with high amounts of alcohol. Those are all FDA approved ingredients. Just because people are sensitive to it doesn't mean it should be banned outright. And I feel like the FDA really needs needs to address this because this lawsuit is essentially saying these products are dangerous when they are approved for eye use in the European Union. And I have never heard of anybody actually like losing an eyeball over these pigments. You know what I mean? Or suffering permanent vision damage or problems. The worst I've ever heard of people with these pigments having issues is some eye irritation, some staining of the eye. And to me, that is not worth this strong of language. I think this is absolutely ridiculous. However, what I have to say, though, is that sometimes laws make no sense, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be followed. And that's kind of where I'm at with this. That just because you think a law is stupid, just because you think a law is useless, just because you think a law is wrong, doesn't mean that you shouldn't 
follow it, that you should find loopholes to get around it. And that's what these brands are finding out. And Morphe, Huda Beauty, and ColourPop are not the only brands that have been using these pigments. There are so many brands that use these pigments, and they all really need to consider whether they want to continue using them, whether it is worth it to go through these kinds of lawsuits. Now, as far as the other lawsuits, the Morphe one's still going on. That's only been going on for a few months. The Huda Beauty one was the first one that I think we reported on in What's It Been Makeup. That one started for the Neon Obsessions palette about a year ago. That one just settled this past summer. And Huda Beauty basically said that they didn't feel like they did anything wrong, but that they were going to give people refunds anyway, just to settle things out. So we'll just have to see how this ColourPop lawsuit plays out. I would really love to know what you think about this ColourPop lawsuit specifically, but just press pigment lawsuits in general, because it seems like more and more are popping up. And I am very very curious to see who's next because like I said there's lots of brands that are doing this. All right, this Brad Pitt skincare line. Now, I don't usually spend a lot of time on celebrity launches because a lot of them are very much the same. They're kind of boring. It's like, yay, skincare, or yay, it's an eyeliner, or whatever. Like, there's not really anything of substance to them that make them stand out. But this Brad Pitt skincare line is unique in so many ways that I really want to talk to you about it and I really want to break it down because I find a lot of the elements of this absolutely fascinating. So the first thing I learned about Brad Pitt is that he owns a vineyard in France, which I did not know. And apparently what he's doing with the skincare line is he's taking some of the things that he doesn't use in the production of his wine, and he's using those ingredients in his new skincare line. The brand is called Lou Domaine, and it is not really clean beauty, but more like natural beauty, eco-friendly products. That's kind of the lane that they're trying to go in. The products are refillable with plastic, but you know, they're refillable. The caps, the wooden caps, are made from wine casks that have, you know, they're upcycling. And they say, which when I look at the ingredient list, I kind of side-eyed it a little bit, but I'm not a cosmetic chemist, so what the heck do I know? But they said that the formulas are between 96 and 99% natural origin. It is also a vegan-friendly line, and they also have a very strict list of things that it excludes. And so many... <laughs> Somebody sent me this that uh, it said that it didn't include conservatives. Um, I, I, someone sent this to me. I didn't see it actually posted. It says preservatives on their website right now, but apparently at one point it said it doesn't include conservatives, which that typo just made me laugh. Anyway, so they're saying that it excludes ingredients that they say are subject to controversy regarding the environment. And they put a bunch of weird stuff in there. You notice it does say preservatives, uh, but they list specific preservatives, including the most common preservative used right now, which is phenoxyethanol. It's pretty much in everything once they got rid of parabens out of stuff uh, because they freaked people out about parabens. So they put started putting phenoxyethanol in everything. But this doesn't even have phenoxyethanol. But there is a preservative preservative system. I did look through the ingredient list. There's a preservative system. It's just not the traditional ones that we use all the time, which makes me question how good is the preservative system if they are not the ones that we typically see in skincare. And this is the killer. Price range. Cheapest product is $80. Most expensive product is $385. <laughs> so the $80 product is the cleanser and everything else is in the $300 range. It's really, really freaking expensive. And one of the things they say is the reason why it's so expensive is because they have these two proprietary ingredients that are made out of like the seeds and the skins of the grapes from the vineyard that there's no pesticides ever used on the vineyard. But they say that these ingredients could work against the destruction of collagen and help balance the skin because of the antioxidant properties. And I mean, we know Know that grapes and blueberries and things like that can have antioxidant properties so it's definitely possible the big thing is that the whole line is supposed to be fighting the visible signs of aging now according to their website they did do tests on these ingredients to make sure that they worked really well but they didn't put up any of the results they just said they tested them so, so cool cool, but where are the results? How do I, like, cool, you did the test, but what happened? I want to know what happened because this is the thing is when you invent new ingredients, 
<laughs> there's there's nothing there's nothing to show that they actually do anything like theoretically it makes sense that they would do something but there's no proof that they do think that's why people use the same ingredients over and over again because we know that they work so i would love to see the results like i think the, the ingredient geeks don't you want to see the? i want to see the results but they're not published so that makes me kind of wonder what's going on there why why didn't they put the results up did they think it was gonna be too wordy or something I don't know even Too Faced puts on their mascara you know makes your lashes you know 4,000 times thicker or whatever it is like couldn't they put something like that on there I don't know I think this is real weird and then comes to the next piece I wanted to focus on with this, which is Brad's involvement. He did such an interesting interview with Allure magazine. It's going to be linked below the full thing. I picked out some highlights because it literally, like, I was giggling out loud. <laughs> His answers were so honest, and I appreciated that. The first thing he said that I thought was so funny was that they asked him what his skincare regimen was and if he would do a demo because a lot of people do those Allure videos. And he was like, nope, not doing that. <laughs> he was like, nope, nope, not going to happen. And he was essentially saying he wasn't even going to do that many interviews about it. That it just, he wasn't, he's not going to be the face of it. He's not going to be on their Instagram. Like it's not going to be like a celebrity faced brand. The other thing that I think he shot himself in the foot and didn't realize he was, at least with people that know about Gwyneth Paltrow's goop, is that he said he was inspired by her because they were like in a relationship or something and they're still really good friends. And he was inspired by her to start the skincare line. And it's like, of all people, people to base your skincare line off of you're gonna choose goop the vagina egg people I just I don't think that was necessarily a good choice but he's just being honest and I appreciate that he did say that he worked with a university professor in France to determine which of his grape varieties had the most antioxidant properties. They also got exclusive insight with Professor Nicholas Levy. He is a leading scientist in progeria. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. It's an extremely rare genetic disorder that speeds up aging in small children. So he had found information through his research about that and then they used some of that information to research for best ingredients in the skincare. And it does sound like he genuinely believes in the products. He said, I know there are new products nearly every day that people are trying to launch, but if I hadn't seen a real difference visually in my skin, we wouldn't have bothered. They asked him if he felt like he must have a skincare brand and he just answered no. <laughs> I love that. That just made me giggle. He also said that he hasn't used much skincare over his lifetime and that he hasn't really had a consistent skincare routine and he just never really did any of that. And he hasn't done very much in his lifetime to maintain his skin health. So, you know, he he said that this stuff works really well, but it's like, how much of this is genetics, Brad? How much? <laughs> this is where this is where I'm at with it. I would honestly love to try these products, but at over three hundred dollars a product, no way in hell. It's not gonna happen. I'm I'm not. It is way past me. It is way beyond me. You passed me two hundred dollars ago at least. I kind of cap my skincare at a hundred dollars, and if it's a hundred dollars, I better really truly believe in it. Like I'm not crap shooting at a hundred dollars, and that's what I feel like this kind of is for me. But I'm really curious to see anybody review this because maybe it's great. I I have no idea, but I'm just saying if you spend three hundred some dollars on each one of these products, use it quickly because I don't know about this preservative system and how sad would it be if you had this stuff for like a month and you smelled it and it smelled rancid? That would suck. So, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm not buying it, but the whole thing absolutely fascinates me. Before we get into the product report, I just have three quick little news bites because I know those first two stories were pretty long. So I'm just gonna run through these last three really quickly. So the first one is that in October, JCPenney Beauty is going to expand from its 10 brick and mortar pilot locations to 300 stores by early 2023 and 600 stores by spring of 2023. So this is gonna build on their partnership with 13 Loon. And if you've never heard of 13 Loon, they are an e 
e-commerce destination designed to inspire the discovery of BIPOC founded beauty brands. 13 Loon brands comprise roughly 20% of the offerings at a JCPenney beauty location. So that's pretty exciting. Speaking of department stores, Kylie Cosmetics is expanding into Macy's also starting in October, October 1st to be specific. They're going to debut with their holiday collection with additional core products launching in winter and the full collection is going to be in stores and online in early spring. So according to the fashion law article that again is linked down below, Macy's is essentially just trying to bring customers into their store and Kylie Cosmetics is trying to get in front of more faces. So really it seems like it's going to be a win-win for both brands, but they're really trying to drive traffic into the store because they say that people spend more when they are in person than they do when they're shopping online. So they're trying to get people in the store and they feel like Kylie Cosmetics is going to do that for Macy's. And then the last story is another brand launch. I don't want to spend as much time on it because it isn't quite as interesting, but I wanted to mention it nonetheless. Travis Barker, he's the drummer from Blink-182. He just recently got married to Kourtney Kardashian. He is now selling skincare, Barker Wellness Skincare. He already had a bunch of CBD gummies and tinctures and stuff like that. Now he's got skincare over there. It's eight pieces all together. They say it's lightweight, suitable for all skin types, and the big thing is is like the CBD and the tinctures or whatever. It all is CBD infused, also CBG and CBC, which I don't know that much about, inside the skincare. And they say that it's a very high concentration of those ingredients. It isn't quite as pricey as the Brad Pitt line, but it's still real expensive. The eye cream is $130. The moisturizer is $85. And if you wanna get bougie in your bathtub, he's selling a $25 bath bomb. Oh my gosh. It's so expensive. It's so expensive. I, who is buying this? I just, I want to know who is buying this. I would love to know. I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. If you want to buy it, I'm not judging you for buying it, but I want to know who you are. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this product report because we have so many interesting launches with Halloween and all the holiday stuff coming out. So much stuff. So let's start with our indie brands with Sugar Drizzle Polish. <laughs> This is called Trick Roar Treat, and this is their, their Halloween palette for 2022. It is limited edition. It drops on Sunday, October 2nd at noon Eastern time, three multi and duochrome shades and three mattes. It's about 29 bucks. Then we have Unearthly Cosmetics, and oh my gosh, these things speak to my freaking soul. 1964 and So Strange are on their first pre-order, so those will be delivered in October. Then The Weirdos is on on their second pre-order. I think that one's due to be delivered in November. And the Weirdos one calls to me the most. The color story, the outer packaging. If you've never seen the craft, this is the perfect season to watch it. And you will get it if you if you watch the craft. You will get why this is so freaking cool. The kicker with these though is that they're $50 each, which I feel like is kind of high. Uh, I did recently try on Earthly Cosmetics though, and I really, really like the formula, but $50 seems like a lot. There was also another palette, but that one sold out. I'll show you anyway, just in case they do another pre-order. It's the Warm Is My Blood palette. 20 pan palette, uh, it was $70 USD. If you are a fan of TikTok, you may know Selena, aka Spooky Boo, and she, you may know she has a beauty brand, and it is called Beauty X Boo. She came out with a Halloween collection, and it is called the Spirit Board Collection. It is $91, and you get everything in there. It's a 15-shade eyeshadow palette, a highlighter, a black eyeliner, and a lip gloss. And this is so cute. Oh my gosh. All right, we have the ColourPop Hocus Pocus 2 collection. You've probably seen this by now, but just in case, I'll show you anyway the PR collection is sold out but it seems like most everything is available in different bundles and things like that if you want most of it it, it all looks like it's pretty much available just not the PR box there's a pressed powder palette here that pressed powder palette it's probably one of those that has those pigments in it I'm just saying it probably does but that's not going to stop me from wanting to use it. Oh no, it will not. <laughs> There's also lip glosses, lip creams, body powder, jelly much, shadow, much shadows, the BFF mascara, and they also have some costume black cat ears that are super cute. You can now use code GenLove for 10% off, just so you know. Lost thing. 
Makeup Revolution and Beetlejuice also launched recently. Love me some Beetlejuice. Huge Beetlejuice fan here. Really cute packaging. There's the Never Trust the Living Powder. Lipsticks inspired by the characters. A hand mirror. Press on nails. A lot of this collection is sold out. So if you were looking at it, hopefully you'll be able to get the items that you wanted because there is quite a bit that's sold out already. All right, moving over to Sephora. So much launched at Sephora this week. It was really hard to narrow things down. I actually actually got specific requests not to talk about the Too Faced collection that's coming out, but I know people will not be happy if I don't talk about it. So here's the skip ahead timestamp if you don't want to hear about Too Faced. But the collection has dropped. It is the Christmas Bake Shop makeup set, $54. These are the scented palettes that they've been coming out with over the past few years. There's Ginger Snap, Chocolate Chip, and Sugar Cookie. You also get a mini Better Than Sex Mascara. The Lip Injection Plumping Mobile Gift Set, $36 there. You get one lip injection extreme and two maximum plump glosses. And one of those glosses is a limited edition shade. Then there is the Yummy Gummy Makeup Set, $42. Why is this so expensive? Does it seem really expensive to you at $42? That seems like a lot. It's eight eyeshadows for $42. I don't know. I mean, I guess because there's also a blush pan in there, maybe that's why. There's also a deluxe sample of the pink lip injection extreme. Stream. Fair warning, if you are new to these makeup streets, as my friend Audra from Audra at Home would say, uh, these usually are terrible quality, typically. So if you are used to regular Too Faced, you know, eyeshadow quality, these typically are not it. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe watch reviews to see, but so usually they're not. Usually they're pretty bad. This one may be a little bit better though. They do have a palette called the Mini Secret Santa Eyeshadow Palette, $29 there. It comes with eight shades. I do think that it's really smart to call it a Secret Santa Palette because I think people still do Secret Santas. I haven't done one in a really long time, but I think people still do them. And I think that would be a good Secret Santa gift for the right person. Huge, massive drop from Sephora collection. We're gonna spend some time on this because they actually are having a 30% off all Sephora collection products going on right now, but it does end today if you're interested in any of these things. So there's two different size advent calendars this year. There's the Wishing You advent calendar for $45, 24 items, and then there's the Wishing You After advent calendar for $25. So that one is supposed to be for between Christmas and New Year's. And what I found interesting about the two advent calendars is that some of them have some overlap in the products. So I would imagine you probably wouldn't want to do both. I think that's a weird choice to do some overlap with the products between them because I would think some people might want to get both. But essentially there really isn't anything super exciting in these, at least to me anyway. The big one, part of the 24 items, like there's like a hair tie and what else is in here? Adhesive tape and a pocket mirror. I mean there's there's weird stuff in here that are just very extremely low value. Most exciting things in here for me was the mini big by Defi defining and volumizing mascara, the cherry lip mask, the mini all day hyaluronic acid hydrator moisturizer, mini brightening eye cream with caffeine and hyaluronic acid, but they're all minis. So it's like, I, I don't think there's a $45 value in that bigger one. And the $25 one doesn't look that exciting either. I mean, exfoliating wipes, eye mask, lip balm, but they're never good. They're never good. So I don't know what I was expecting. All of the Sephora holiday stuff, for the most part, is all wishing you whatever. So like there's a 12 pan eyeshadow palette that looks really cute. It's 15 bucks and has these iridescent toppers in the middle, which are super cool because the rest of it is relatively natural looking, but then you can top it with the topper if you want to. So if you have somebody that likes something a little more natural, but they maybe want to try something a little bit more wild, they can just throw on a topper or not. So I think that's a really cool setup. Then there's a 16 pan eyeshadow palette that's $22. And what I like about this is the, I don't think the packaging screams holiday. So it may not be weird to keep this out year round. Like some people might think that it's weird to have, you know, use a Christmas palette in the middle of May, you know? They also have a glossed lip gloss set that's $15. Really nice safe bet for a gift because they do, you know, glosses don't typically have a lot of pigmentation. So that might be a good gift for somebody. But if you do know somebody that likes a lot of color on their lips, 
lips. They also have a lip stain set for $30. For skincare fans, there's the Wishing You Wellness Six Piece Skincare Gift Set. It's $40. And what I found fascinating about this and I think was really smart is that each one is individually packaged. So if you don't want to give the whole gift set to somebody, you can take pieces of it out and give them to multiple people, which I think is super freaking smart. Uh, it includes a white gua sha tool, a textured face massager, a smooth face massager, a mini roller made from opal, and two glittery cooling face globes. So that one really stood out to me that I wanted to mention. They also have a bunch of cute ornaments, but the two I wanted to highlight for you are the multi-use face powders for $9 and the lip gloss ornament for $5. The lip gloss, because it's just, it's five bucks, it's a little lip gloss. It's just a cute, really easy gift. And then the multi-use face powders, they say it is a set of three iridescent powders to complete your look from eyes to lips to cheeks. But I'm wondering what this really means because this looks like a Kaja blush to me. Like, I don't, it doesn't, the description doesn't seem to match the photo very well. So... I think that one's kind of a crapshoot. There's a lot more than that, but I wanna go over everything because we still have a lot to talk about in the product report, uh, but there's like a nail polish set, a face brush set, two eye brush sets, an eight pan eyeshadow palette. They have some of those blockbuster palettes, those big, huge, giant ones uh, that typically are relatively low quality, but I've never gotten one from Sephora, so I'm not really sure there. This one though made me laugh though because it's a lashes ornament and it's like, okay, I'm going to take fake hair that I glue onto my eyeballs and I'm going to hang it on my tree. <laughs> it just seems like a weird thing to like make into an ornament fake lashes I don't know I think that's weird do you think that's weird or do you think that's normal am I weird for thinking that's weird that's what I would love to know there are two products at Sephora listed as coming soon that I thought were pretty interesting on October 3rd online and then in stores on October 13th the Huda Beauty empowered eyeshadow palette $67 gold copper and neutral focused I really feel like this is like the sexy older sister of the rose quartz palette it's just real sexy and like I don't know just really really pretty very smart color story there and then also just listed as coming soon with no specific date is the hourglass ambient lighting edit unlocked face palettes there's three different colorways butterfly elephant and tiger they're $85 each which to me is obnoxious but it's pretty typical hourglass pricing it just is uh, they do say that five percent of profits from the unlock collection support the non-human rights project to secure fundamental rights for animals there are also a ton of Sephora favorites kits. Now I used to be obsessed with these things back when I first discovered them. So if you are in the makeup discovery phase of your journey and you're looking to try a bunch of Sephora brands but you don't want to pay full price, these are a great way to do it. So we have the Sparkly Clean makeup set. That's $42. Full sizes of the Ilia Balmy Gloss Tinted Lip Oil and the Rose Ink Blush Divine Radiant Lip and Cheek Color. And then and there's minis from Biosance, Call to Lee, Milk Makeup, and Say. Next up, the holiday lip set. It is $45. You get full sizes of the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution Lipstick in Pillow Talk and Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Glossy Lip Balm in Nearly Neutral. Along with that, you get mini sizes of lip products from NARS, Pat McGrath, Too Faced, Urban Decay, Give by Gwen Stefani. And yeah, it looks like there are two red and a bunch of pinky shades. So if that's your jam, this might be a great way to try all those formulas. And then the last one I wanted to mention is the Makeup Must Have set. This one's $54 and it's because it comes with three full-size products. You get the ABH Extreme Hold Laminated Look Sculpting Wax, the KVD Beauty Tattoo Liner in Trooper, and the Ilia Limitless Lash Lengthening Clean Mascara in After Midnight. As far as deluxe sizes, you get a Fenty Gloss Balm, you get the Natasha Denona Baby Retro Palette, and an Urban Decay All Nighter Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray. And then finally, you also get a bunch of minis from Grande Lash, Polish Choice. Uh, it's the Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. That's really good. I've heard for acne prone skin, fantastic product. Everybody raves about it. And then the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid 
blush. I almost didn't include all these gift sets because I didn't want to sound like a robot. However, I pulled my Twitter and also YouTube community and almost everybody was like, yes, I want to hear about the gift sets. So I picked out my favorites, the ones that I thought were the most interesting and I'm going to share those with you. So we have this one I know is a hot item, the Laura Mercier Mini Rose Glow Caviar Stick Eyeshadow Trio. $29, you get three pink and rose shades. They're called Kiss from a Rose, Strike a Rose, and Moonlight Rose. Pat McGrath Lust Gloss Duo New Dimension, $30. You get Wicked Whisper, which is a coral rose, and Faux Real, which is a deep beige with a pearlescent sheen. Next, we have the Rare Beauty Mini Kind Words Matte Lip Duo for $20. Travel sizes of the matte lipstick in Humble and the matte lip liner in Humble. Moving over to Clinique. If you have a Clinique lover in your life or if that's you the must-have makeup set $35 quick liner in intense black the high impact mascara in black almost lipstick in black honey two cheek pop highlighters in gold celebration and in black honey then there is the hourglass phantom glossy lip balm duo for $50 we have rouse witch or ruse which is ex an exclusive shade to the set and then slip which is a best selling shade fresh sugar I bought this lips one of these lip sets one year and I feel like I never went through it until it ended up going bad and I have to throw it away I feel like you get a lot in these lip sets from fresh sugar and it's a really nice formula the lip care set $38 you get a Mint Rush Freshening Lip Treatment, the Advanced Therapy Treatment Lip Balm, and Lip Balms in Rose, Honey, and Petal. I probably wouldn't choose that because I like more of like the fruity ones rather than the floral ones. Uh, but if you're into that, I really do like Fresh Sugar. Two YSL sets, the Mini Rouge Percatore Satin Lipstick Trio, $40. Three mini lipsticks in Le Rouge, Fiery Red, and Le Nu. And then the these came out this year, I believe. The YSL New Lip and Cheek Balmy Tint with Hyaluronic Acid Duo, $39 there in New Flush, which is a cherry red, and New Chills, which is a soft plum. NARS. If you like this shade of NARS, you'll probably be real happy with this. This is the Behave Backstage Cheek Set, $39, full-size Behave Liquid Blush, a mini Behave Blush, and a mini Behave Multiple. And that was it for Sephora. And I was like, oh, sh here we go. We're going over to Ulta, and I'm going to see all this. Thankfully, Ulta was very slow this week. Maybe they'll trade off for next week. Ulta, really and truly, the biggest thing was NYX dropped a bunch of holiday stuff. So they have their own advent calendar. It's $65. There's just a bunch of lip products. or mattifying powder, eyeshadow eyeliner, eyeshadow base, liquid highlighter, two setting sprays, just a bunch of stuff in there. And there was so much stuff. And it was the last thing I was doing. And Ulta's website crapped out on me. Here's the picture of Ulta's website crapping out me and I just ran out of time. I couldn't wait for Ulta's website to go back online, but I will link it down below for you to see all the rest of the NYX gift stuff. But honestly, that was the most exciting thing that was on there. There were like a couple of random throw off products that just weren't very exciting. So we're just ending the product report here because I think that's enough. It's enough. <laughs> Let us move on to PR purchase product of the week where I review a product that I just got either purchased or PR and this finally came and I'm so excited. Tina went out of her way to make sure I got this palette. This is the Tropicolor Sydney Grace in the Fancy Face palette. Thank you, Tina, for making sure that I got this and I put it on today and I am in freaking love. I am so excited for this palette. Y'all know my love for Sydney Grace and their formula and Tina just, she crushed it. She absolutely crushed it. So on my eyes today, I set up my base with rum raisin and maroon. Then on my outer corner, I used grape nut. And then right in the middle of my lid, I used this bright blue shade here. And I wasn't sure if it was gonna be overpowering, but what I did was I used coconut on the inner corner and kind of blended that in and softened it a bit and it almost turned purple. Just so freaking pretty, so pretty. I cannot wait to dig into this more. Thank you, Tina, for making sure I got this. If they don't send it, I will gladly purchase it to support you because I love you dearly. And I'm just so excited and happy for her. So thank you again Tina for making sure I got this and if you are interested in this it is still available over on the Sydney Grace website. 
Notable sales this week, Herbivore has 25% off friends and family sale that goes on to October 6th. The Ulta Fall Haul sale that I completely forgot to look up and see exactly what it is, but I will link Ulta's website and information down below for you. Pretties for your face, 50% off, but there are some exclusions. There is a What's Been Makeup Hunter. Her name is Stephanie. She does have a code over there. It is Sneffy, S-N-E-F-F-I-E, -E, and she's says that will get you an extra 20% off if you would like to use that. Rose Inc. has 25% off site-wide for their ready-to-wear event. The sale does exclude sets. ColourPop is having a 30% off of their mega palettes. And Scott Barnes is having an inventory closeout. He says it's 50% off to make room for new products. And then finally, my friend, our artist shout out of the week. Allow me to introduce you to Artie Face art she is from the netherlands and oh she says in her profile makeup is her happy place and i love that it's my happy place too i do want to warn you though if you do want to go over and check out her instagram she does have some gory special effects stuff over there so just be forewarned that scrolling you may see some some gory stuff just a heads up but let's focus on some of the really pretty looks that stood out to me this one is called alien fairy and this stood out to me because it's mint green skin and usually when you see aliens it's usually like an olive green or bright green but that mint green is sending me i love it so much i also love the pop art elements along with just really pretty shading and i especially love the pops of pink on the cheeks really really pretty second look is called opal mermaid and again, I just love the color choice for the skin, really playing into the iridescent with the adornments, but then really going into the gold white makeup choices on the face. Love it so much. I also love the webbed fingers. I think that's such a fun touch that she didn't have to do, but she did it and I love it. It is so freaking beautiful. All right, the third one is called Moon Phases Witch and I am so in love with this one. I've always loved looking up at the moon and noting what, moon, what phase the moon is in, especially when I was teaching because you know the kids go kind of bonkers <laughs> during the full moon but anyway I digress the moon depictions on her chest just absolutely gorgeous but what really gets me is the way she uses line work to accentuate her collarbones and then she extends that look up to her face and I just love that so much the color choice on her nose and the contouring is so pretty on the sides of her face just all of that just definitely my favorite parts definitely my favorite parts and she has so many good looks over there so many beautiful things so if you love her looks if you're interested I will have her Instagram link down below I just followed her and maybe you might want to follow her too and that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you, as always, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their na names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to submit things for the show and make sure I don't miss anything. You are awesome. Our chat today is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Hopefully you can join us for chat, but if you can't, it is no problem at all. It's very easy to find on the replay and just as fun. All you need to do is go over to your subscription feed. It should be right there. If you're subscribed, this would be a great time to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. But if you're not subscribed and you don't want to subscribe, that's okay too. You can also go over to my channel page, click on my videos, and then click on the video titled live chat. Thank you again so much for watching. I appreciate that you choose to watch What's Been Makeup every week. It warms my heart so, so much. And if you would like to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you if you want to watch them, including in case you missed it, last week's episode of What's Been Makeup should be right there. But if you do need to go because you got stuff to do, it is no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.